Okay, let's talk about envelopes. So while envelopes are relatively simple compared to many other routines, you'll see that they have a subtle but important effect on the sound. For example, a lot of designers go for uh, linear envelopes because they're really easy to design. I mean, they're just a line equation. Um, you know, they're really simple, they're really fast, but they don't sound all that great. Uh, for example, let's uh, listen to this saw wave here. You'll notice that although the decay starts out really, you know, it starts out okay, but once it gets quiet, it just drops off the face of the earth. Um, this happens because even though the volume is decaying at a steady rate in terms of amplitude per second, that's not actually what we want. Our, our ears don't actually perceive it that way. We tend to perceive amplitude and pitch in logarithmic units such as uh, decibels. And this makes sense because exponential decay is everywhere in the physical world. Um, now let's listen to that saw wave, but make it decay exponentially instead. Okay, that's better, right? You know, you, you hear that steady, you know, decay doesn't just drop off. Um, there's a few ways to do this. Uh, one of the easiest ways is, is to just use a one-pole filter. And let me show you how to do one of those. They're actually pretty easy. Okay, so this is a diagram of a one-pole low-pass filter. So you can see that the signal goes in here, um, goes down this way. This is, this is a one sample delay. You multiply it by some amount that determines the low pass from you know zero to one. So let's say you know this might be, um, you know, let's say this is seventy point seventy five, right? Then one minus a might be point twenty five because they have to add to one. Okay. So we've got that. So what this is going to do, this is going to apply a low pass to whatever's coming in. So what you do is you uh, you send a pulse through um, this, right? And uh, what that does is it makes the wave rise to that level. So let's say you're sending at zero, you set a one through here. Well, depending on the low pass amount, it's going to rise to one at you know some rate. Um, and you know if the low pass is st is you know um, harsher, it'll rise more slowly. If it's lighter, it'll rise more quickly. It's also worth noting that uh, it, it never hits one if you're going from zero to one. Uh, it gets very close. Um, so what you would do is you would say, okay, well, when we get within some reasonable range of the target, we'll go to the next envelope stage then. Uh, likewise, it never completely hits zero. You, you might want to just you know consider it zero when it gets to you know point zero zero one or uh, something like that. Now this is an okay technique, but it, it is a bit slow, and by slow I mean it's very recursive and it's hard to vectorize. You know if you've got SSC or something like that, you know they'll speed things up immensely. So what you might want to do is. Um, use a lookup table and so instead of doing this recursive filter you know as as graceful as it is um using a lookup table yields much kind of cleaner results um let me show you an example of that okay so we've got our lookup table that you're looking at here where on the left side is sample number zero on the right side is however big you want the table to be so in this case it, it would be 128 samples it's kind of convenient size the power of two um, and you can see that there's a exponential rise from zero to one in this. Um, and so what you do is you take your linear value, let's say you have a linear envelope, and then you take that and look this up on this table, and you get a value between zero and one, but when that would be curved uh, in a way that would give you that exponential decay. I like to use decibels because you get a free decibel lookup table uh, out of this also and it's easy to say well I want this to decay from you know minus 5 dB to minus 40 dB or something uh, you know this way because you know you know you know what um, what indices that those are in your table and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it one thing I didn't really talk about is that a lot of um, analog synths and you know if you use the one pole method you know the attack is actually this uh, convex right it's very sharp very snappy and if you just use a lookup table, you don't really get that. So you might want to play with the curves and kind of see what you can do with that. And, you know, that's pretty much it. Join me next time, and thanks for watching.